Uh, Dalia Simpida is going to present socioeconomic inequalities and hearing health uh, in England. Yes, I can you hear? We can hear you fine. Yes, uh, great. So hi everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about an important part of uh, our lives. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, hearing. And uh, hearing is important because hearing connects us. Uh, we humans are made for relationship and uh, uh, hearing for those not natively deaf and fluent in a sign language is central to the sharing of emotions and ideas and uh, happenings. Uh, when somebody loses their hearing, uh, not only the ear function itself is affected, but also related activities, uh, for example, understanding speech uh, during communication and uh, the participation, the whole participation of uh, people in society is affected. Uh, my research has shown that people who are less advantaged in terms of uh, socioeconomic position have worse hearing health, and those with worse hearing health cannot easily move up the social ladder. So uh, this concept uh, will inform my presentation today, which is entitled Socioeconomic Inequalities and uh, Hearing Health uh, in England. I will present you today why do socioeconomic and lifestyle factors matter and the evidence from the English Longitudinal Study of uh, Aging for the role of socioeconomic position in terms of uh, prevalence, early diagnosis and uh, mental health inequalities in those with uh, hearing loss. I, I didn't mention my background, in my, I'm a chartered psychologist and a hearing scientist uh, based uh, at the University of uh, Manchester. So, uh, hearing loss uh, is uh, far beyond uh, a sensory impairment because it has many physical, social, cognitive, economic, and uh, emotional consequences and affects the quality uh, of life. Today, uh, hearing loss is a major global health uh, challenge. Uh, it is estimated that it affects the life of over 460 million people globally and those with whom they communicate. Uh, unless action is taken, this number could cross 900 million by 2050. Uh, I and my colleagues proposed a, a novel theoretical framework supporting the argument that a substantial proportion of hearing loss in uh, older adults is preventable by tackling the socioeconomic inequalities in hearing health during the life course. Now I will explain why a socioeconomic approach is crucial for planning uh, sustainable models of uh, hearing care. The unequal distribution of power, money, and resources in society leads to social inequalities. As a result, some groups of people are more privileged than others, which creates injustice and the disadvantage that influences life experiences and health outcomes. Some critical indicators of socioeconomic position include educational status, occupation, and income. Here, health inequalities is an emerging research area, and I and my colleagues recently proposed a definition saying that hearing health inequalities are the avoidable differences in the people's hearing health across different social or population groups. The mechanisms by which uh, these inequalities are uh, generated remain uh, unclear uh, so far. Uh, so using a critical interpretive synthesis methodology, we examine the mechanisms and explain the relationship between uh, socioeconomic inequalities and the uh, hearing health in a life course perspective uh, through a conceptual model. This model provides uh, a visual representation of the several modifiable factors of hearing loss in distinct uh, life stages and uh, the evolution over time, which is a new thinking in uh, hearing loss research. So let's now look at uh, this uh, novel model that uh, depicts the modifiable determinants of hearing loss in several stages across the life course. 
First of all, uh, in childhood, uh, children born to parents from a lower socioeconomic background tend to experience more illness and injuries and the antibiotic drugs used may affect hearing health, especially in uh, sick babies with a genetic predisposition. In turn, uh, consequences of uh, hearing loss in children can include impairment in uh, language skills and uh, lower educational achievement compared to children with uh, normal hearing. The lower educational status is also related to the lower health literacy, uh, which is a common issue among people of uh, a lower socioeconomic position. That may explain why uh, individuals of a lower socioeconomic position adopt uh, an unhealthy lifestyle with uh, higher levels of smoking and alcohol consumption, higher body mass index, and uh, lower levels of uh, physical activity, which are all risk factors for hearing loss. The lower educational level is uh, a predictor of uh, social inequality in later life because it limits employment opportunities, relegating people to more poorly paid jobs. Furthermore, uh, the lower level manual jobs are those with the higher level of uh, occupational noise exposure, which is a risk factor, a well-known risk factor for hearing loss. Occupation and income then may affect access to hearing health services and hearing aids use uh, due, uh, due to the financial uh, barriers that affect the help-seeking behavior for hearing loss. These uh, hearing health inequalities can affect the re retirement status and income of uh, older adults as it affects the ability to continue working or to advance occupationally. Also, hearing loss affects communication in healthcare settings in older age, and so affects the quality of uh, care and the management of uh, many other health conditions that are commonly comorbid with hearing loss, that is cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's and dementia, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, depression, and many other uh, chronic health conditions. As hearing health deteriorates, as you can see the different uh, uh, orange color, uh, the lower socioeconomic status uh, becomes, uh, uh, the socioeconomic status uh, becomes lower and results uh, in a worsening cumulative hearing health over a life course in a vicious cycle. The life course approach in hearing health can lead to the development of appropriate interventions and public health strategies that can have significant health policy and uh, practice implications. To verify the role of socioeconomic and uh, lifestyle factors, uh, I and my colleagues uh, presented uh, the first study in audiology that examined the association of uh, objective, objectively measured hearing loss in older adults with four different socioeconomic position indicators education, occupation, income, and the wealth, and uh, several modifiable lifestyle factors, such as tobacco consumption, body mass index, uh, physical inactivity, and alcohol consumption above the low risk level guidelines. And uh, we found that those in a lower socioeconomic position were up to two times more likely to have hearing loss at the same age. The adjusted odds of hearing loss were higher for those with no qualifications versus those with a degree uh, or in higher education, those in routine manual occupations versus those in managerial or professional occupations, and those in the lowest versus the highest income and wealth quintiles. The study showed uh, that hearing loss among uh, older adults is as strongly associated with uh, socioeconomic and lifestyle factors as with core demographic risk factors, such as age and uh, gender. In simple words, in that uh, cross-sectional study, age was not the most important risk factor for what is widely known as age-related hearing loss. Uh, we thought that uh, the term age-related hearing loss is not an inclusive term to express 
the many hearing problems uh, without specific etiology in older <laughs> age. And uh, therefore, we recently introduced to the literature a new term to represent uh, the several behavioral factors. Uh, the term is called lifestyle related uh, hearing loss. Uh, and uh, lifestyle refers to, be, to individu individual uh, uh, risk factors and behavioral factors uh, in terms of social practices and uh, ways of living uh, adopted by individuals that reflect, of course, their personal group and socioeconomic identities where people live in terms, for example, uh, in a, uh, deprivation, if they live in, a, in an area with higher dep deprivation. So uh, let's see how the socioeconomic factors affect uh, inequalities in the diagnosis of hearing care. In a recent study, we examined patterns of uh, health pathways among older adults in England using hearing data of uh, 8,529 participants aged 50 to 89 years old from the English longitudinal study of uh, aging. We found that up to a third of older adults with hearing loss in England could be undetected and untreated. And uh, that was be because uh, although participants had objectively identified hearing loss, over 35 uh, uh, decibels in uh, three kilohertz, they did not self-identify their own difficulties correctly and reported themselves as having good, very good, or excellent hearing. Significant predictors now for the total misreporting were female sex, no educational qualifications, working in a routine or manual occupation, tobacco consumption, alcohol intake above the low risk level guidelines, and lack of moderate physical activity. This lack of uh, self-awareness of hearing loss is a problem for uh, many people, and uh, it's crucial that those with uh, hearing loss are detected in a timely way, referred to ear specialists, and given access to hearing aids. Of course, more research is needed to understand why so many people are undiagnosed, though I and my colleagues feel that uh, making hearing loss part of a routine primary care examination among older adults would be really beneficial. Uh, regarding the socioeconomic inequalities in uh, mental health, my recent research findings provided uh, robust evidence that the hearing loss directly causes depression, which differs according to socioeconomic position. A graded relationship between uh, hearing loss and depression, according to socioeconomic position, was revealed uh, with those with hearing loss in the lowest wealth groups experiencing up to double the relative risk of depression compared with those in the highest wealth quintile. Therefore, the early detection of a hearing loss by primary care professionals in routine assessments may not only promote better hearing health, but also prevent or possibly delay the onset of depression. The need for establishing evidence-based programs for hearing screening is underscored uh, by the new National Study of Hearing in England, uh, published yesterday in uh, the International Journal of uh, Audiology. The study revealed that the people in the north of England are more likely to have worse hearing close to 50 uh, years old than those with uh, similar age profiles living in the South, which is linked to a history of uh, socioeconomic and health disparities between the North and South part of the country. In this uh, short talk, uh, I presented uh, my recent research findings for the role of socioeconomic position in terms of prevalence, early diagnosis, and mental health inequalities in those with uh, hearing loss. Hearing is uh, an important part of, uh, for our lives as it lets us enjoy life and connect to the world. As a take home message, uh, I would like to highlight that uh, 
Hearing deterioration is a lifelong process, but not an inevitable result of aging. And understanding this process is an essential step in addressing the burden of hearing loss and the management of related comorbidities in later life, including dementia, of course. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And of course, feel free to drop me an email to discuss uh, further. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dalia. I don't know if you can hear the, the applause, but I'll relay that applause. We uh, have a little time for questions before Maria's talk. Would anybody like to ask uh, questions to uh, Dahlia? Yes, okay, so uh, David has a question. I think he's put it in the chat. Would you like to speak it into the room? Yeah, I just said it, just put it on the chat for other people to benefit. But hi, Dahlia, I am actually in person. I'll turn my camera so you can see me. So it's really good to see you. Thanks for another really interesting talk. Um, I just wanted to ask, if I'm interpreting your results correctly, you said that about 10 to 15% of the variants can be attributed to age, and then you had another further 10 to 15% due to lifestyle factors. But what about that other 70%? Um, because is it 70%? Yeah, 70% of the variants. What yeah. is going on there? That's a very good question. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these findings show that the, there are possibly many other unknown at the moment determinants of hearing loss. Uh, might be even environmental factors, I guess, uh, which need to be, to be further explored in uh, future research. So, the, so there is a, a room for a, a investigation and further research uh, for the future. Yeah, I wonder whether given your results showing there's this north-south potential divide, whether that could be attributed to, say, location as well, uh, or genetics even. Um, so I wonder whether you could factor any of those into, um, and, into any of your future models, ELSA or otherwise. Uh, at, the, at this stage, uh, we uh, cannot uh, infer any causality because the design of the study was a, a cross-sectional study, but uh, the findings uh, are linked to our previous uh, study that showed some patterns in uh, regions of England where uh, in uh, representative samples uh, of uh, people aged over 50 years old, uh, the highest uh, level of uh, uh, hearing loss were among people living in areas with highest deprivation, in areas where people have more manual uh, occupations, and uh, in uh, areas where people consume uh, uh, highest levels uh, uh, of uh, alcohol. Uh, this is not a, a, a causal relationship at this stage, but gives us some idea, some patterns, some trends. Uh, to to give us some uh, directions for further examination in the future. Great, thanks, Sally. And just for everyone's benefit, for people who might not be aware, I know that this is somewhat of a controversial topic, particularly for those that, that are established. So I just wanted to thank you for your contribution uh, to the field in terms of moving it forward. Thank Fantastic. You thank you very much again, Dalia. Okay. And for our next presentation of the day, we have Maria Goodwin, Goodwin here in person, uh, who is going to be presenting different.